Welcome to sections 3.10b and 3.11. All right, gentle people, we're going to continue our discussion on limiting reagents. Now, like I mentioned before, there is no such thing as a molimeter in the laboratory. There's no way for you to count the atoms in a bulk material. So in my last lecture, what I did is I told you there were 14 pieces of bread, 8 pieces of ham, and here's the recipe I want you guys to follow. If I wanted to make this analogy more apt, what I would have said is that you have 200 grams of bread and 200 grams of ham, and then how many sandwiches can you make? Now, although we don't have a molimeter in lab, what we do have is a balance, and a balance measures grams. And so remember, if I have my grams of my reactant, I can easily go to the moles of reactant. And this is based on the molar mass. Now, once I have the moles of reactant, I can go to the moles of my product. The way that I can do that is I can understand that the chemical equation can be read in terms of moles. So going from the moles of reactants to the moles of products, all that's gonna take is stoichiometry. So the last thing I want to do is I want to get a quantity of my products. So again, I don't have that molimeter, but I do have a balance. And so I could get to grams of products. And again, to do this conversion, I'm going to use molar mass. So what I want you guys to realize is that if I start anywhere along this line, I can get to another place on this line. I should get comfortable converting back and forth from any one of these points to another point. With that said, let's go ahead and see if we can put these ideas to the test. What I want you to do is follow this balanced chemical reaction. I'm going to give you 100 grams of nitrogen and 30 grams of H2. The first thing I want you to do is calculate the limiting reagent. The next thing I want you to do is I want you to calculate the theoretical yield in something that I can measure. So calculate the theoretical yield in terms of grams. When you're done, mark the right answer. All right, you know, people, here's my equation. And what I've written on top is that conversion flowchart. So remember, to get from grams of reactant to moles of reactant, I'm going to use the molar mass. To get from moles of reactant to moles of product, I'm going to use stoichiometry. And finally, to get from moles of product to grams of product, I'm going to use the molar mass. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I know is I'm starting out with my grams of reactant, and I want to get all the way to grams of product. So I have 100 grams of nitrogen. And so what I know is if I look at the periodic table, each nitrogen weighs 14.01 grams, and there's two of them in this molecule, and so that's going to be the molar mass, the grams per one mole of N2. Now I'm gonna use stoichiometry based off my chemical equation. For every one mole of N2, I'm going to produce two moles of NH3. So grams of N2 cancel out with grams of N2, moles of N2 cross out with moles of N2. And what I get out of this is 7.14 moles of NH3. So let's go ahead and do the same for hydrogen. So again, I'm going to times it by its molar mass. So 1.008 times 2 grams of hydrogen get me one mole of H2. Now I can look at the stoichiometric coefficients. For every three moles of hydrogen, I'm gonna make two moles of NH3. So let's go ahead and cancel units out. Grams of H2 cancel out with grams of H2. Moles of H2 cancel out with moles of H2. So if I do this calculation out, I get 10.0 moles of NH3. So let me show you guys what I did is I went from grams, I used the molar masses to get to moles of reactant, 
And then I use stoichiometry to get to moles of products. And so this is where I'm at, moles of product. So what I can see is 7.14 is less than 10. So I'm not able to make any more than 7.14 moles of NH3 because I'm gonna run out of N2. So N2 is my limiting reagent. The 7.14 moles of NH3, that is going to be my theoretical yield. And this theoretical yield is in terms of moles. Now the question asks, can you give me the theoretical yield in terms of grams? So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the molar mass to turn my moles into grams. So 7.14 moles of NH3 is going to go ahead and be my theoretical yield in terms of moles. So I'm gonna use the molar mass, 14.01 plus 1.008 times three grams of NH3 is going to equal one mole of NH3. The moles of NH3 are gonna cancel out. And what I'm left with is 121.4 grams of NH3. All right, gentle people, that gets us the theoretical yield in terms of grams. So let's do one more calculation. Let's say I go into lab and in the real lab, in the real world, I use 100 grams of nitrogen, 30 grams of hydrogen, and I do the reaction and I go ahead and produce 105.7 grams of NH3. Since this was actually produced in real life, this is called the actual yield. The actual yield is what you get if you run the experiment. Now, what I want you guys to do is calculate the percent yield. After you do that, mark the right answer. All right, gentle people, the percent yield is equal to the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. So if we look at the question that I gave you, 105.7 was the experimental result. So that's the actual yield. And we calculated the theoretical yield in the last quiz. That was the 121.4 grams of NH3. I'm going to times this by 100%. And if I do the calculation out, I get 87.07% as my percent yield. Now, to give you guys an idea about what this is about, is you have to understand when you go into lab, things don't always go perfectly. What can happen is you can have side reactions. The reaction may not go to completion. You can have reaction materials spill out or stick to your glassware. There's a lot of things that can happen so that you don't reach this theoretical maximum. To summarize all the stuff that we've covered in the last two lectures, here are some basic definitions. A limiting reactant is the reactant that you're going to run out. It is consumed first. Theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that can be made based on the amount of reactants that you have. Specifically, the limiting reactant is going to determine the theoretical yield. The actual yield is the experimental yield. It is what you actually produce. The percent yield is based off this equation, the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100%. I hope that made sense, Chem 1A, and remember to stay safe.